Cole, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. How you doing, man? I'm doing really good. I'm I'm really happy to be here. Uh, Sean, I was just saying, I I always love getting to connect with you, and we've been in this space a long time together. So. I was thinking, I still remember the first time I met you in 2014 at an open announcement up in Seattle and you were with Stop. Rory Jambard and Rory was like, Hey, yeah, I think my picks this year are going to be this guy, this guy, and then this guy right here, he's going to make the games. I was like, okay, nice to meet you, sir. And yeah. here we are 10 years later. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of amazed at how fast it goes, but just right. looking back on the career that you've had, I mean, you've been to the games, I think by my count, 10 times, mm -hmm. which is rare. Mm -hmm. How yes. have you been able to maintain that level of consistency? this long oh man you know honestly i i really as cliche as it could sound it's a deep commitment to it and because you have to be and if we ran the gauntlet of the 10 last 10 years of what my last 10 years have looked like i've had some years that were easier years and some mm -hmm. years that have been very difficult but in all of those seasons it's having the priority of training be the thing this is this is the career i chose and i chose this as a career path and i committed myself to that and so waking up every day like hey like this is this is my main focus and this is my pursuit uh i think that's probably the best um one of the you know the best indicators of as to why i've been able to repeat year over year you know and then there's other things like you know just better education understanding the body um veteran awareness all of those things play a factor but i think the one main thing is just the fact that i woke up every day even this last year when my child was in the nicu like that was the main focus the middle of the day i came home i trained to the capacity that i could train and we went back to the nicu like mm -hmm. that you know that was that was my focus so well we were talking about that a little bit before we came on about yeah. avery and the ordeal that you're both of your children have been through yeah how i mean how do you f i have no idea how you first of all you even deal with that but then second are able to deal with that and then train at the same time so how yeah. are you able to get through that to the point where you know here you are again qualifying for semifinals yeah yeah you know i think it's very much a conviction towards like what one has set out to do and 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 you know i i like i told you like i, I chose this as a career path not because like Honestly, not because like CrossFit is like this like ultra lucrative career mm -hmm. path. Like honestly, there's other places that probably couldn't made more money. <laughs> you know, so it's not that it's it's and it's not the Instagram followers, but it was more like I committed in 2014. Like you were just mentioning, I was gonna go to the games and I wanted to build a platform. I wanted to be a positive force in a community that wanted to change and grow. And that was the CrossFit community. That's what I saw in it. You know, I saw mm -hmm. this beautiful community that was just a bunch of people that wanted to be better. Like that's a cool community to be a part of. Like I want to do that. And, and, and maybe I can be a force for good in it. And so, you know, like having that conviction as, you know, for what I set out to do, I think is really what allows you to, to focus in and hone in on the purpose and the reason behind why I'm doing and why I wake up and, thrust the body a little bit every day and um and prioritize it again because like there are plenty of other things that i could have probably pivoted on especially over the last three years when i was having kids and they were in the nicu um that would have been a little easier to spend time on um, yeah. but but yeah i still feel convicted and called to to continue to build a platform and just be a positive force in this community and how is avery now avery's good thank you yeah uh, both both boys um they're seeming uh, seemingly healthy and doing really well, especially all things considered. But, um, you know, it, it looks like at this point that we just have a normal baby on our hands that just had a had an early start and, and needed to go through a little bit of a challenge in the NICU first. You mentioned, too, and I thought this was fascinating again before we, we came on about how yeah. you come out of that on the other side and you're actually better off for having yeah. gone through it. And I, that's, yeah. that is a very unique perspective of that. I don't think a lot of people who have been through maybe a similar ordeal will, would have, yeah. why do you have that perspective? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, you're, you're asking a really deep philosophical uh, <laughs> and theological question for me, you know um, you know, I think a big, big part of it is, is um, you know, I think we all can understand to some degree that when you go through a life challenge, like it's going to fortify you to some capacity i mean it, it's why sports and training is such a good example of what life is in a way it's almost like living life in fast forward because it's the same idea like you put the body through a certain level of stress and you're going to change and you're going to adapt well you know hopefully the idea is when 
if you have a healthy mindset and approach and perspective on life, when you reach life's challenges, it's going to fortify you to some capacity. Um, I understand that it can cripple some people. Um, but, uh, I was telling you that, you know, when, before you go through a life challenge, you kind of hope that you respond a certain way mm -hmm. and you might have that perspective. Like, Hey, like I, I, th I, I think I'm going to be this person when I come through, when you know, want to come on the other side. Um, and it's one thing to think that before, but it's another thing to experience that and then actually have that occur. And, and that is like really encouraging um, to say like, Hey, like, well, like I, I responded in a way that I was hoping that I would respond. I can do this. I can be better. And, um, that was, yeah, that was, that was really encouraging. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a journey, man. It's been a yeah. journey. Well, we've seen that attitude play out, I think in your competitive career, having this reputation as being the comeback kid and, and yeah. some of these, the final day performances <laughs> that you've had in regionals to, to get yourself yeah. uh, to the games. Why do you think you thrive in those situations? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, I mean, first and foremost, again, you're, you're, you're talking about some, some pretty deep philosophical and theological things in my life, as far as like where my faith stems from and, um, my belief about the world. Um, you know, it's, and it's actually, this is part of the reason why I got into CrossFit in the first place. There was a video back in 2012, that was maybe 2011 that was circulating. It was Dan Bailey and Rich Froning talking about their influence in the community and talking about their faith in the community. And I don't know if you guys remember, but back in like 2012, there were some videos circulating of Rich Froning. He used to uh, write uh, a verse in Matthews on the toes of his shoes. Mm -hmm. And what that verse was essentially saying is uh, something along the lines of like Christ went through this struggle and hardship for, uh, for the sake of other people. And for Rich, that was very much a pull of like, so you can go through this challenge here and you can you can deal with this sacrifice and this suffering right now. I share a very similar sentiment in life. Uh, you know, it's like it's in, and again, this isn't about like preaching the gospel and whatnot, but it's more so just like a life perspective of like, I can endure suffering. I know I have that internal strength. Mm -hmm. I want to have that internal strength. And so I'm going to choose to face that as I choose to face it in, in the garage every day and, uh, and in, in the gym every day. And hopefully that will translate to when those things arise in life mm -hmm. and that I can get on the other side of it and I can endure that and then be better for other people on the outside, on the backside of it. And so having that perspective, when you come into competition, knowing that, Hey, things aren't going to always go your way, but you need to be steadfast. Anyways, you just need to be yeah. steadfast and continue to do the things that you set out to do. Stay positive, stay focused like everybody has hardship at some point in time. I mean, if you look at a CrossFit Games weekend, the number of people that deal with a hardship to some capacity where like things just don't go their way, mm -hmm. it's almost every single person in the field, if not every single person in the field. Like you, no perfect weekend exists, even for Matt Fraser when he was just dominant. Like mm -hmm. I, I got first, like I was right there with him. I was like, I know his weekend wasn't perfect, but he stayed focused. He just kept doing the thing that he set out to do. And uh, it, it pays, it, it's a beautiful dividend that it pays, man. There are not many people walking around right now who can say that they have been to the games 10 times. You're okay. one of them. Now you're going for your 11th. But what more do you have to prove right now? Um, there isn't anything I have to prove. There never has been. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that's kind of gotten, um, I think a little, maybe a little lost in what the ethos, the... Yeah, the yeah, let's just go with ethos. The overall ethos of the mm -hmm. CrossFit Games and the CrossFit Games community um, that was different from when I first started to what it is now. Um, it was so much about early on. It seemed like a bunch of it was almost like an exploration for people mm -hmm. to find how fit can I be? Can I do this thing? Yeah, we all wanted to be the fittest on earth. Um, and we were competing for that and there was a high level of competition. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I don't know if you ever saw Josh Bridges in 2014, but yeah. like <laughs> talk about competitive mindset, <laughs> you know, like, um, but the one thing that was so cool was like in the back in 2014, when you went to, back into the athlete village, like they were sitting on couches, lounging around, making jokes with each other. There wasn't this like, um, um, 
uh, was it um, like bravido or, or whatever the, that term is um, of like yeah. trying to like prove something. <laughs> it was like, I'm exploring the best that I can possibly put forward in myself, hoping that that is enough to win. And I think this, this, you know, I think there's a sentiment that has gotten kind of spread in the nature of the, of athletes lately where it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm here to get, I need sponsors. I want followers. I want a limelight. Uh, or I have something to prove. It's like, oh, well, you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing to prove. It's like, like your value and your worth has been predetermined prior to the competition floor. Like, what do you have to prove? You know, you winning doesn't make you any more value of a valuable of a person, any better of a person. Like, that's for you to determine your character and what you grow in and you develop. Like, so for me, yeah, not not about anything to prove, but. Um, there is still things that I wanted to explore myself. Uh, I still wanted to, um, you know, in, in a sense, have a relevance, a relevance in, uh, in the community, continue to be able to speak to the community, talk with the community, influence the community. Um, and hopefully again, spread some positivity, spread some light, um, you know, help people, um, learn how to be kind and work hard. <laughs> well, let's talk about helping people because you have made the transition now. Yeah. into being a coach yeah and why was why was that the right time because i think this happened last year why was yeah. it at the right time for you to say yeah i'm ready to take on this responsibility at comp train yeah it wasn't the right time <laughs> <laughs> you know like right. i wasn't done competing yeah. and 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 i knew that about myself but for ben it was the right time to ask me mm -hmm. and um ben was done coaching he was done being a a coach of CrossFit Games athletes. He wanted to focus on growing the business and being with his family and, you know, all the other things that he had his hands on. Being a coach for athletes is a huge commitment and takes a lot of time and energy. And so he was done doing that. And he was like, there's, there's no one else that I would rather have do, you know, step into that role than you. And so I'm going to offer it to you. I'm going to ask that you, you know, step into this. And then I think the cool the cool thing about it is he had the awareness and the grace uh, about it to say, hey, this can look like however you want it to over the next couple of years, because I know you're not competing. And I honestly, I don't want you to be done competing. He actually really liked the idea of having like a player's coach, somebody who yeah. is still doing the thing and coaching and helping people. And so um, when we talked through everything because that was kind of my first response like well man i'm not done competing so what do we do about that mm -hmm. uh that was his response and we talked through that and uh, i think it made a lot of sense you know that that hey we can pay we can put a little bit of focus in into the business and the structure of comp train and see if we can help some of the individuals that we think are maybe a little overlooked quarterfinals athletes even people who just want to like perform well in the open to mm -hmm. semifinals athletes and so like let's help try to improve that community and put some focus there. Um, and that gave me a little space to continue to compete as well. You spent a lot of time around him, not only as a coach, but just also as a person. What mm -hmm. are the biggest lessons that you have learned from him when it comes to being a good coach? Yeah, I think one of the, I think the main thing is that is a, it is a, is a role that you have to honor. Mm -hmm. You have to honor and respect. And coming from a background of traditional sports and athletics, played college football at the University of Washington, I will just say that I have experienced the opposite of quality good coaches. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I have experienced some some really, um, you know, just poor methods of coaching, uh, and to see that contrasted with Ben in the way that he pursues and uh, always pursued coaching. I'm like, Hey, like I honor this role and this is something that I take very seriously and I carry the burden of your career on my shoulders as well. It's not just on you. It's on him. Um, like that, that kind of mentality was something that I really respected a lot. And so when I stepped into the role, like I, re I realized that, Hey, if I want to do this fully, it's part of the reason why I didn't really go out and pursue taking on, individual games athletes mm -hmm. and like do a, like a big recruiting thing and try to make a bunch of noise in the space. So I knew that I, well, well one, I still wanted to compete too. Um, me and my wife wanted to have kids and well, <laughs> we kind of had a feeling that that could possibly not go great. Mm -hmm. And so when you consider all of those things, I didn't feel like I had the full ability to commit to the respect and honor it, it you should have in taking on the role of a coach. 
whenever you start a new position like that, it's one thing to see the the sport and the the methodology from an athlete's perspective. But mm-hmm. as you move into the role of coach, what are some of the things now that that you've learned that maybe you didn't understand fully before stepping into that that role? Uh, give me an example. What do you what do you mean by that? Well, I think that you just I, you, when you become you know when you start a new job or something, you learn a new skill or you learn a new perspective on something that maybe you didn't have. And so that's mm-hmm. I'm just interested in is the, are there things that someone like you who's been around for so long in this ecosystem sure. now that you're a coach are there things like oh i man that's a that's a new lesson i learned about yeah well i think on one on one front i think there was something that was really cool for me in this last year was um i i've actually learned how to better make practical changes to my own form and technique okay because i had more of a lens of like hey if i needed to deliver this to an athlete how would i deliver this to an athlete mm-hmm. And so having that internal dialogue, like I was essentially like experimenting, like, okay, if I was to tell somebody this, like, would this make a change? Uh, and so like, that's, that's one thing is just sharpening the ability to communicate uh, technique cues and, and changes that I would like to see. Like, that's, I think a very practical thing. And, and it's actually, there's, I spent a time in my career where I, I did a bout on YouTube, right? I committed to doing 60 YouTube videos, one a week um, for 60 weeks. I committed to that. And part of the impetus of doing that was because I wanted to get better at speaking on camera. And so it's like one of those scenarios where like it's a practical takeaway that if people want to get better at any one thing, go commit to doing that thing mm-hmm. or something that looks similar to sharpen that skill. And so that's been a really cool, um, a really cool aspect of, of stepping into that. As you look back on the time that you've spent as an athlete, 2014 up to now, 10 trips to the games, what are you most proud of about your career? Um, the number of individuals that have thanked me after a competition for acknowledging and noticing them as I've gone through the competition weekend, like mm-hmm. volunteers and judges, um, and having like real conversations with them. Um, it is very easy to get wrapped up in yourself on a competition weekend, especially in something like the CrossFit Games where everybody's focus is on you. Um, and I just want to be the kind of guy that no matter what scenario I'm in and what kind of platform I'm on, I see other people in the scenario. I see other people in the room and it's not, I want to be the guy that walks into a room and says like, Hey, there you are not. Hey, here I am. Mm. You know, like that's, that's kind of a kind of guy I want to be in life. And so um, to have had that sort of feedback from people that, I'm at least doing that to some degree. Um, that's something that I feel like I can, I can go to sleep proud of. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you so much for taking the time. Really looking forward to watching you compete again. Yeah. Am I, yeah. I mean, did you honestly think that you, that you would be going for 11 back in 2014 when you said you just wanted one, you, you know, uh, I actually, I gave somebody, uh, a date and it, the date essentially landed somewhere in this timeline 10 to 11 and so i had that in my head i uh, and and the actually the indicator this kind of a cool indicator the thing that uh kind of like tipped me off is like i looked at some of my favorite running backs in the nfl over over the last 20 years or so or 30 years and said like how old were they at their at their oldest when Mm -hmm. they retired i think that could be about the timeline when you could be Hey, and it's matching up pretty well. So yeah. I'm, I'm not, you know, I feel good. I got a lot of juice in the legs. I love competing. Um, you know, I have this, I mean, there's a reason why I played football, right? Like I loved hitting people. I, you know, like it's a weird side of me that I don't, so I know. like, I, you know, it's like <laughs> as, as nice as people think I am. It's like, sometimes I just want to hit somebody. <laughs> across the line and the helmet goes on. There's a switch. Totally. No. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, so um i love competing i love getting on the floor and seeing what i can give um i love being an inspiration for people i love um i love getting to hear people's stories and the inspiration that it feeds me um you know i just and i hope that we can just continue to make this world a better place together um and uh right now we're doing that on the competition floor yeah well you're definitely one of the good ones cole and thank you so much for being in the ecosystem thanks for being uh in the space and honestly best of luck at semifinals hope we get to see you in fort worth for trip number 11. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. All the best of the family. Great to hear that everyone's doing well. Thank you. Yeah, and as always, I told you, I love getting connected with you, man. So thank you for the time.